Hi Mel. You responded to one of my videos uh, because I mentioned you in it and so I am responding back to you even though you didn't mention me and didn't subscribe to me even though you should. You're one of a small group of YouTubers whose, uh, whose videos I watch all the way through without fail. And I'm worried that you may hate me now because I left a comment saying that getting used to your delivery was like getting used to Joe Cocker's performance style in Woodstock which was a complete compliment um, no matter wh how it may seem that's what it was but you, okay <laughs> This, uh, this video of yours um, is really fairly serious and um, so just try to imagine that I'm that underneath this this is fairly serious. If, uh, if I had this hypothetical spouse that, that you're talking about First of all, she would have to go out and get a job because I need a steady income. Then, uh, rather than tell her not to read the Bible or to read the Bible, I would um, tell her to read Alan Watts. There's, a, there's, there's an Alan Watts book called Psychotherapy East and West, which I've never actually read, but uh, this hypothetical spouse sounds like the type of person who might be especially interested in uh, psychotherapy so um, maybe that would be a good title to start with and uh, then if you ever talked about it in a vlog I could find out more about the book so that that would be what I would do if I had this spouse and um, there's another uh, there was another point in your video um, that was very interesting to me where you said that uh, if you hear voices um, it's a it's it's a move in in, in the direction of uh, what, what I don't think you said in the direction of sanity but just uh, in, in the direction of getting better uh, to um, to imagine that the voices are your brain talking to you to me to 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 own the voices and uh, this reminds me, I'm, uh, I may have performed um, thought therapy on myself at the age of 15 in that way. When The Exorcist came out in 1973, um, for some reason I actually read the book, which I normally didn't read bestsellers, I guess, because it was a horror book, I read it, and it really scared me. Uh, even though by that age I um, I already wasn't buying into it. It, 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 the because it was it was plain to me that the book was a thinly disguised. Uh, what, what am I trying to say here? That that the subtext of the whole book was that uh, Catholicism is real, and all the people who uh, uh, claim that it's just an old su superstition are are full of it and and uh, and don't know what to do when they're faced with demonic possession. Anyway, but the book did scare me, and I liked horror films, so I was really eager to see uh, The Exorcist. And uh, I went opening day at the National Theater in Westwood, and was incredibly angry to discover that they'd used the uh, expected blockbuster status of this movie to raise their ticket price by 50 cents. Um, but I went in to see the movie and it was uh, it's it's kind of forgotten now but the exorcist was was just beyond anything that anybody had ever done in a horror film in terms of explicitness uh, expl uh visual explicitness and just ex relentless um convincing viciousness i mean there had been a lot of kind of sleazy horror films that were uh, that tried to be this vicious, but none of them had ever had the level of 
uh, artistry behind them that this film had. And it was pretty intense uh, for me. Um, even though, again, I just I was sitting there just getting incredibly irritated with the obvious subtext, which was that the filmmakers were pretending that this this kid in the bed who had just completely turned into a demon and could turn her head 365 degrees, 360 degrees, was your typical uh, victim of possession, as though this was the kind of thing that scientists were dismissing as epilepsy or, uh, you know, mental illness. In, in other words, it was a, it was a gigantic uh, advertisement for medieval thinking. Great horror movie, but, but you, I mean, you could just see its effect on the culture uh, in that way. It was, it, it was sort of like the answer to Rosemary's Baby, which was a film that basically satirized the death of faith in the 60s, and uh, The Exorcist, although it wasn't entirely clear at the time was the was faith roaring back in the mass media um, I, I remember at the time that the Catholic Church at first was was just uh, violently distancing themselves from the movie but then uh, as it just became more and more successful somebody clearly figured out that that this was speaking to the uh, target audience of, of, of the Catholic Church and they started, you could just see the church begin to go back toward that, uh, that kind of uh, superstitious version of Catholicism uh, when before the exorcist um, they, uh, they had been trying to uh, you know, present themselves as a modern uh, intellectually credible uh, belief system, you know uh, I mean, technically, the Catholic Church, ex unlike American evangelicals, the Catholic Church accepts uh, Darwinian evolution, all these sorts of modern ideas. Um, and that film, in a lot of ways, was the uh, was kind of a turning point in the popular, uh, in the um, public's... Uh, in the church's relationship to the the mass public, at least in the United States, it it showed them the marketing direction that they should be taking. At, at least that's my opinion. Um, but I've gotten away from my little personal story, which is that I I went to see this movie in the afternoon uh, on the Wednesday that it opened. And I'm sitting there, and it's just unbelievably horrifying to me, uh, just terrifying, scary, like nothing I'd ever seen before. But after one of the most, you know, frightening and intense scenes, early scenes in the movie, when it when the scene came to to an end and there was a a quiet lull in the movie, I heard this horrible, um, uh hyperventilating and moaning and whining behind me and I turned around and like two rows behind me was this this old older guy and I was like 15 so for all I know he was only like 25 but there was this guy and he was he was freaking out he was totally into it he had seen the devil and as the days went on you know you'd read more and more about this in the in the media and of course the studio uh, was a publicist for this they would every time somebody you know said I saw the devil I've been hypnotized by that film you know they would make sure that uh, the message got out because controversy sells tickets you know and I just remember turning around going what is his problem I mean I'm horrified and I'm scared uh, but um, I'm 15 and and it and at least I know this isn't real but then, that night, when I went to bed, I tried to close my eyes to sleep, and I had these just these terrible images. I can't even remember what they were, but it, I, I just, it, it was, you know, as a kid I'd had nightmares, and, and things had given me nightmares before. Uh, but this was particularly bad, and I just felt like I, I, I really couldn't stand it. I, I, I just didn't want to be this, this scared. 
and I found I couldn't close my eyes and go to sleep because uh, I would just have flashbacks to the movie. And so I'm lying there in bed and I say to myself, now wait a minute. Wait a minute, Bob. You can close your eyes and look at anything that you see there because it's all in your head. Whatever you can see in your imagination is already in your brain, so it can't hurt you because it's already there. Now it's it's funny to me because um, you know I, I don't I before I started telling this story right now I hadn't really sat around pondering you know what it means to me now I just it just suddenly occurred to me when I was watching your your video um, I'm not really sure uh, what I think of my 15 year old reasoning there but one thing I do know is from that day on I never had any kind of a nightmare that would uh, that would cause me to lose sleep or be afraid to go to sleep uh, and I had complete from that point on I had complete control of um, my imagination's ability to screw with me I thought anyway as you as you go on in life you discover subtleties of how your imagination can screw with you when when you're a kid it's like uh, you know pretty much in your face uh, sp splatter horror fear and then as you get older you realize there are all sorts of other ways that you can uh, you can trick and deceive yourself um, and also uh, I mean I, after this happened I felt a little bereft because I loved horror and I felt like I had like di uh, I had desensitized myself to horror and so for a while I, I was desperately trying to draw pictures that were scary to me and I just sort of couldn't do it and eventually I gave up and now when I look back at some of the stuff that I drew then I, I say to myself wow that that's pretty disturbing stuff but um, it didn't bother me then um, and now in a tribute to you Mel I'm gonna let this video go on a well okay I don't know where this is going never mind <laughs>